All right, Rishi, today I want to be a little bit more technical uh, than uh, than usual. You know, we're zero people. We need to become more technical every day. Um, I want to talk about a topic that is in relation to tracking behavior of users on a website. And um, since, since I discovered, you know, years ago, um, what a great tool Google Analytics events are, I started to like, oh my God, like they opened up almost like they fought gate or of what's possible in terms of uh tracking it's like learning um, a new language right exactly exactly totally totally it's like oh my god i can't believe i can track that oh my god i can't believe i can track that right and obviously i want to warn people and say hey you know like track the stuff that matter to you based on your goals don't start tracking everything it's bullshit like it's stupid to start tracking oh i want to know this little thing that doesn't, that doesn't matter right focus on the things that matter to you your kpi whatever you're trying to achieve and, and i would i would push business. push even further and say focus be very be very mindful about the handful of things i would say no more than 3 to 5 I think the discipline of having to prioritize yeah. that way, it just leads to better outcomes. Totally. Now, I want to talk about um, the three uh, Google Analytics events that I like to set up the most when I usually uh, start working with a, with a client. And, you know, it's not something that I do all the time. It really depends on the case by case. Um, I can talk about... Um, I can talk about when I would set one up. So I'll talk about the first one. The first one is the coupon error. So one common problem that I've come across when working across a lot of different uh, clients in a lot of different um, industries um, is that people have problems with coupon codes. So whenever they get to either the, you know, the cart of the or the checkout, there's an issue with uh, submitting that coupon code. It's either not working because, you know, there maybe like that coupon code comes from an affiliate and that coupon code is expired or, you know, they um, they, they write a capital letter um, and then the coupon is like capital, is, is, um, lowercase. So there's always like an issue with the coupon code. So one, one, so whenever I discover that, usually it's through qualitative data, right? You ask a question, oh, what's one thing that is stopping people, uh, that is stopping you from buying? And oftentimes people say, oh, coupon code is not working, right? Again, I'm not saying that every website has that problem, but whenever you come across that problem, what I've done in the past is I go deep into the problem. I'm trying to understand more about the problem. So um, one way to do this is to set up a Google event that basically tracks, first of all, how wide the problem is across your users. And what I mean by that is how many people actually submit a coupon code and then get an error, right? So I want to understand first how how um, how uh, popular the problem is. The second thing I want to understand is for those people that have submitted a, a, a coupon code in cart or checkout or whatever the coupon code can be submitted um, and got an error, I want to actually record the text of that of that error. So then I can actually put together a list and I sort I can sort the list of the most popular coupon uh, text of the coupon uh, that people have got and then start digging deeper into like, oh, you know, a lot of people are getting this coupon error. Let's go in, in my Shopify, you know, backend or whatever platform I'm using and see what coupon code that, that one matches to and where it's coming from and I can investigate further, right? So that's the first one. Super, super um, a fan of that because everybody, you know, loves coupons and whenever a coupon code is not working, they're always leaving the website anyways. The second one is some behavior on, um, on, on the product page. So you and I are a big fan of product pages, obviously. And, um, I'm a big fan of trying to understand the, the behavior on, 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 on product pages, like where people are clicking, what uh, people care the most about. And one of the elements on the page that I really, uh, I'm a big fan of, of, uh, of uh, uh, tracking, especially if there is some sort of like reasons why um, people are actually checking out, it's an it's a image gallery. So let's say like the classic 
you know, image gallery, you have like the, the big image, and then you have the thumbnail below, especially if that product has a lot of very interesting images. I want to know how people are actually consuming one image thumbnail after the other one, because image gallery is always like super, um, you know, it's a section of, of a product page that has a lot of attention and engagement all the time. And I want to see how much people are actually uh, checking them out. The third one, um, so, you know, we, we, we always talk about, oh, you know, it's very important to understand how much people are scrolling in order to understand, you know, what part of the, you know, product page or any other page people consume, right? Because oftentimes what happens is that there is a very important information in the, or multiple informations in the in the decision making process they are critical in the decision making process of the user but that information is at the bottom or it's hidden behind like a drop down or it's hidden behind like a tab and so on so um you know it, 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 you know one thing is like okay let's understand how much people are scrolling and one way to do it is to look at you know heat maps or and the scroll maps like uh, you know things that like hotjar has has a, a scroll map feature um the other option is to actually set up um an event in google analytics that actually measures um scroll depth and uh, that one is also okay because it tells you like 10%, 20%. You can actually see how many people are scrolling, you know, 10%, 20% and, and so on, right? But you don't know at which point, like what 10% represents, right? Like if you go on a page, you have no idea what 10% represents or 90%. Oh yeah, users have scrolled 50% of the page. What does that mean? Where? Like point point to me on the on the on the viewport on the screen what 50% represents right mm -hmm. so a few years ago i would say like 3 few, uh, 3 4 years ago i actually discovered the best absolutely the best method about uh, scroll uh, tracking which is um it's basically like a google uh, tag manager uh, capability called element visibility and I'll, I'll put the the link to uh the google Anal uh, the google analytics article that talks about it but basically what that allows you to do is wh when i read it Richie, i was like oh my god I, I was blown away completely but basically what you can start doing is you can uh, imagine um you know like a normal viewport meaning like what the user is actually seeing at the moment on the screen right what you can do is you can name each section of a website um, in whatever kind of like way you want in, in using the, the CSS. So for example, let's say a homepage, right? You have the header and then be, below the header, you have like links to category um, pages, right? So you can call the top section, you can call it like hero, right? And then just below that, you can call it like uh, category links, right? Mm -hmm. So now what you can do is you can send an event from Google Tag Manager to Google Analytics that shows you how many times um, a user has each section of a, of a page in the viewport, right? And that allows you to actually be super, super specific about what the user is actually seeing within the viewport. So instead of using, oh, the user has scrolled 80% of the page or 10% of the page, which doesn't mean anything, you can actually see how many times they've seen, you know, section number one, section number two, section number three of each page. So these, I would say, um, are my top three uh, examples of uh, Google Analytics events. I love it. I love it. That's great. It's awesome. Do you, do you have any? Well, I in, don't have an events anymore? one, but I do have like a marker. Um, so it's a, you know, it's a, a, uh, in Google Analytics, it's a, uh, what's it called? Uh, 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 advanced segment that you can create. So the segment that I like to create is where um, I create a rule for, because I'm a copywriter, I'm really interested in understanding how, how engaged people are responding to my sales pitch. So I don't look at all users that came to the website because many of them are never going to buy. So I create a segment for people that uh, came to the website, saw three pages, mm -hmm. and spent two minutes on the website. And of course, it depends. I change it based on the criteria. But yeah. what I'm trying to eliminate for is someone who comes to the website, leaves a tab open, and is opens another tab and is never comes back for like 30 minutes. I don't want to count for that because that's not active. So that's why the three-page criteria. 
and then of course the the two minutes criteria because i believe that you know people who are spending two minutes and navigating the website have some intent and it's good enough for me to kind of start figuring out so that's the one that i use but yes you're right these things really Do you specify what pages they have visited or or, so or not? i specify the i specify the the one of the pages that i want to include in the analysis Got but it. then every any two other pages can be whatever cool and let me guess those that have visited multiple pages have a higher conversion rate than those that have only one page right 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 and it's <laughs> obviously, obviously obviously and yeah the, the idea the idea is to really from from my perspective is to understand what proportion of people are engaged because if that number is low then i can come up with a strategy to increase engagement using priming and stuff like that and then mm -hmm. the other one is to actually get a real feel for you know real feel for like what is the upside potential here because if engaged people are converting at a fairly high rate, even if the overall conversion rates are low, then I know that I, there's limited opportunity. But if engaged people are not converting, then yeah. I'm excited because that tells me that, you know what, they're, in, they're, they're looking for something, but they haven't found it. So I need to find it. So That's very clever. There's one last thing I want to say, uh, which... There's not one event in particular that I want to add in my top favorite list um, because that event can be anything. So you and I, uh, when we run experiments with the, with clients together or separately, one of the things that we always do is set up events to understand if whatever we added to the page or we whatever we want to track about that page because it gives us um, insights, we'll track it, right? So for example, do you want to talk about the example of the call to action? Yeah, yeah. So if I'm placing a multiple call to actions on a page that lead up to a sales pitch, then I need to know what percentage of people that came to the page ended up interacting with it. If the number is 2%, it is meaningless for me to draw a conclusion of whether the test was successful or not because it wasn't seen. And so then I I know that even before working on making the sales pitch better, I need to focus on improving the discovery rate of the sales pitch. So that's that's how I would use it. Yep. And it's it's like it's almost like an additional evidence. So it's always difficult to say, oh, you know, the reason why kind of like justify why an experiment has gone well or hasn't gone well. It's always difficult. I think. I'm a, I totally believe that a lot of times like people when say, oh, it didn't work because of X. I think it's guessing uh, you don't actually know why it hasn't worked or hasn't worked. Um, but by setting, setting up an, an, a, a, an event in this case on that call to action in, in this example, it's an additional insight about the why the experiment has gone well or hasn't gone well. That's that's exactly right. That's exactly right. So another good good topic. And um, guys, if you are new to this channel, um, if you found us the first time, Lorenzo and I have been talking about conversion optimization for many years. We finally now decided to chronicle our journey through these YouTube videos. Um, every there's day. a lot more that's going to come every day. In fact, we're recording a few episodes. Uh, we're really kind of tripling down on this because we think there's so much room for having conversations. So if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. If you've never left us a comment, we love when we hear a comment from someone who we've never heard from before. Uh, please like, please think of one person in your whole world who you think would be finding this topic interesting and share it with them. Um, we will see you again shortly. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye.